These are the worst mistakes to have ever been made on Kitchen Nightmares. And this one right here was so sloppy that it took forever to dish out orders. In Season 3, Chef Ramsay visited Casa Roma in Lancaster, California. Opened in 1958, this restaurant was the oldest in town. At the time of filming this episode, the restaurant was owned by Nyla and her son Jeremy. Nyla was looking for some business opportunities, so she bought the failing restaurant in hopes of making it successful once again. However, since neither of them had any experience in the restaurant industry, they barely made a profit. While the bar used to be packed on most days, the dining room, which was their main source of income, remained empty. Since business was so inconsistent, there were days that the restaurant made $175 a day, and then there were days where they made as little as $9. Either way, running a restaurant with an average of $100 a day is impossible. And this led to a lot of conflict within the management. What's more, in just two and a half years of owning the restaurant, they'd almost gone through 20 different chefs. Some left due to a loss of pay, while others just had some differing opinions. At the time of Chef Ramsay's visit, Chefs Drew and Eric were assigned with handling the kitchen. And according to the staff, Eric was the main reason behind the business's failure. Eric was so selfish that he never bothered to send the food out on time. And it's not even like he cooked up some delicious food. For the most part, his food was disgusting. On the other hand, Drew had a genuine passion for cooking. But because Eric expected him to do everything in the kitchen, it led to a lot of conflict and this affected Drew's productivity. Fast forward to when Chef Ramsay ordered the food, as usual, he had to wait extremely long. Not because the chefs were getting his food ready to perfection, but because Eric was busy taking a smoke break. Imagine having to sit through a whole hour waiting for your first order, only for the next one to take another 75 minutes. It's absolutely unacceptable to keep any customer waiting for that long. But it's even worse that Eric kept a Michelin star chef waiting for an eternity only to be served putrid food. Of course Chef Ramsay was pissed. When he criticized Eric for his disastrous service, the man simply got defensive. It was a bad day, pal. Now you're bad pushing day. enough. I get it. We understand. Eric showed absolutely no respect towards the famous chef. The way he talked, argued, and how he just didn't care showed how much of a trashy person Eric was. What the big problem is with you, Eric, you've accepted it. In your opinion only. There's nothing edible. During the dinner service, Eric was so disinterested that he didn't even communicate with Drew. If Drew asked any questions, Eric just ignored him. As the service progressed, food was sent back to the kitchen for being undercooked, frozen, and just tasting bad. But Eric simply didn't care about it. He was also too lazy to even taste his food. When food comes back like that, the shrimps, you never taste it? Well, you know, what can you do? And because he didn't get along with Drew and was sluggish as hell, the diners were left waiting for a whopping two hours. On top of that, the owners were clueless. Seeing the pile of orders and the ever-increasing wait times, Chef Ramsay had enough of them and closed the restaurant down. After the service, Chef Ramsay had a one-on-one -on -one with Nyla and told her about the biggest problem. Darling, he's not in the slightest bit interested in fucking in work and he's here for one thing and one thing only, hey, money. Jack. Ramsay was clear about one thing. If Nyla even wanted a slim chance at success, she needed to get rid of Eric first. Nyla, at first, was a little uncertain if this would be the best decision for her restaurant. But then Chef Ramsay reminded her of Drew. Then finally, Nyla did what she should have done a long time ago. The whole thing's just not gonna work. Okay, you, so what do you wanna do? We're gonna part ways. Okay, no problem. But this next restaurant had a committed owner and a chef who was just the opposite. In season two, Chef Ramsay visited Sante La Brea in Los Angeles, California. The establishment was a healthy food restaurant that also had some vegan options. Sante La Brea, at the time of filming, had been in business for 10 years and was run by owners Dean Hamui and his sons Arthur and Sammy. Even though the restaurant was in the heart of the city, they were $200,000 in debt and Dean was close to losing his house. Dean did everything including the cooking and cleaning, despite having a manager. Mark, the manager, and Aurelio, the head chef, were good for nothing. In fact, Mark had no clear role. Though he was hired to manage, all he really did was whatever he wanted. He was more concerned about how the restaurant looked and apparently had spent $5,000 on something as meaningless as a liquor display. Now, I say this because the restaurant was already running at a huge loss. There were definitely better things that they could have put their money into that could have actually helped the business. On the day of Chef Ramsay's arrival, Aurelio didn't show up and this clearly showed how much he cared. When Dean, the owner, tried to reach out to him, there was no answer. So, with Aurelio being a no-show, Dean was in a huge dilemma. But the show had to go on, right? This is incredibly predictable, but whatever Chef Ramsay ordered was appallingly bad. 
The first dish, a turkey melt, was so dry and disgusting that he fed it to the dog who was sitting with his owner at the next table. And the last dish, blackened salmon, was too dry and tasted way too fishy. So, after giving feedback to Dean about the awful food, Chef Ramsay went to the kitchen to inspect things since he was suspicious about the salmon. Chef Ramsay's suspicions were right since he found a major health code violation. One of the worst mistakes was that Dean wanted to keep Aurelio after he showed up hours late. Sammy and Arthur were very angry with Aurelio about everything. Not only did he lack promptness, but he kept the kitchen disgusting and a mess. However, Aurelio was very casual about it. What made the sons even angrier was that Dean still wanted Aurelio around despite that. He knew how this jerk worked and what he did during Chef Ramsay's visit. And that weakness led to Aurelio taking advantage of the situation. During the dinner service, when Chef Ramsay confronted Aurelio about the poor condition of the refrigerator, Aurelio's answer left Chef Ramsay in dismay. Did you see the fridge? Yeah. Anything to say or? I'm just cook. I'm not in charge. The worst part is, Dean placed the blame on himself even though it was Aurelio's mistake. It's no wonder Mark and Aurelio took advantage of him. Needless to say, the dinner service was horrible. None of the customers liked their food, and most of it was sent back. All Dean needed to do was find his voice, and Chef Ramsay helped him find it. But this next restaurant used the only meat that should never go in a quesadilla. And guess what? They claimed it was their specialty. In Season 6, Chef Ramsay visited Mill Street Bistro in Norwalk, Ohio. This bistro was owned by Joe Nagy after he lost his job in food sales. Joe bought a livestock ranch and later opened the bistro, thinking that it would complement the ranch. The biggest problem about the bistro was Joe himself. He was rude, pretentious, disrespectful, and a liar. The bistro, according to him, was fine dining, but it was nowhere close to that. Joe also claimed that the food was fresh and farmed to table, but that was all a lie. It was mostly frozen. Joe only liked to brag about his farm, and as a boss, he wasn't exactly what an employee would want. He was rude to his staff and disrespectful. Is there enough bread for dinner right now, or yeah. do you want me to do that part of the thinking too? The way you treat me is disrespectful, crude. Then you need to find another place to work. He ran the restaurant like a dictatorship, and on top of that, he was rude to customers. The meeting with Joe started off on a good note, but little did Chef Ramsay know how bad it would get. Well, the good start was mostly Joe bragging about himself. I am self-taught by old-school Europeans, master chefs that had a liking to me. Lying to Chef Ramsay about fresh food is something that Joe should have never done. Because the moment Chef Ramsay would start tasting the dishes, he would know anyway. Whatever feedback Chef Ramsay gave to Joe, he didn't like one ounce of it. Whenever the famous chef said something about the food, Joe became defensive and argued with Ramsay. Well, we're not dousing the plate in oil. I'm not here to argue. I'm just telling you. Yeah, I can make you another one of these if you want to just keep on moving. One of the things that Joe hated the most was when Chef Ramsay handed him the micro carrots that he used as a garnish. He found it extremely insulting, especially since Chef Ramsay handed it right back to him. The owner hated knowing that Chef Ramsay was going to go to another restaurant to get something good to eat. What else could the poor man do? He was starving and not one dish was palatable. When the famous chef returned to give his feedback, Joe revealed his arrogance. When Chef Ramsay asked Joe to give him some insight about his lunch, Joe was downright condescending. I've never had anybody critique my items that told me every one of them was a piece of sh**. Chef Ramsay, however, made it a point to give his feedback, and this didn't sit very well with Joe. What was really funny was that when Chef Ramsay told Joe that he wasn't a chef and to stop pretending that he was one, Joe denied that he said he ever was. So when Chef Ramsay asked him to reconfirm who the chef really was, Joe asserted that he was. I'm not a certified chef, but who cooks? I do. Right, so you're the head chef. Correct. Make up your mind, man. The worst mistake was that Joe wasn't taking criticism and failed to see what was actually wrong. You don't even listen to your customers, let alone your staff. You have a gifted young group of servers that told me more problems and issues in the first 20 minutes of meeting them than you have done all f***ing day. When Chef Ramsay told Joe to impress him with the dinner service, Joe became defensive yet again. Joe then told Chef Ramsay that the elk he found chewy was loved by his customers. By the way, who the hell puts an elk in a quesadilla? Chef Ramsay was stunned. However, Joe ignored Ramsay's advice and continued to be in denial. $35 for entrees that are inedible. Have a look at yourself, man. People seem to enjoy it. Bull 
It's funny how Joe, after all that, called Chef Ramsay his twin. The staff didn't want to tell Joe the truth because he was really rude to them all the time. And yeah, there was even a quiet sign in the kitchen, which is completely ridiculous. If there's pin drop silence in the kitchen, then how is anyone supposed to communicate? Anyway, when the customers started sending food back to the kitchen, Joe, as usual, wasn't in the mood to accept that his food was awful. It's safe to say that this man was the king of denial. With that, let's head on to this next restaurant that used the most expensive meat, but did they know how to cook it? Featured across two seasons, seasons 5 and 6, Chef Ramsay visited Burger Kitchen in Los Angeles, California. At the time of filming, the restaurant had been open for 16 months and was owned by Alan Saffron. Alan always enjoyed eating meat, and his love for meat drove him to open a hamburger restaurant where he could cook with Wagyu beef. However, there was a serious problem with his family. Alan and his wife Jen didn't treat their son Daniel as an adult and disrespected his girlfriend Wendy. Alan also stole some money from Daniel. Basically, when Alan opened the restaurant, he didn't have enough money to open it. So what he did was take money from Daniel's inheritance, something that Daniel's grandfather had left behind for him. Alan didn't even see Daniel as his business partner, and whatever important decisions that were made, Alan did it without Daniel. It's not even like he ran the show very well all by himself. Alan had hired and fired over 20 servers and 20 chefs, as well as changed the menu 10 times in under 2 years of being open. Alan and his wife believed that the staff were the main problem. They also thought that the social platform Yelp was conspiring against them by deleting all the 5 star reviews and only leaving the negative ones. Now, that's a really deluded idea. To make things even worse, David, their head chef, didn't get along with Alan and Jen. But more so with Jen. David, yes, you need to listen to me. It's hard to be belittled every day, so for me to come to work now is like almost unbearable. In the end, all the food that Chef Ramsay had ordered turned out to be frozen. And the Wagyu beef that Alan bragged about was nothing like the original. But Chef David wasn't even allowed to make any changes. He had to follow all the recipes that he had been given, and he wasn't even paid his wages. However, Alan and Jen were in denial. Did you add wine to the mushroom recipe? That's how you make sauteed mushrooms. I just asked a question. Did you add yeah. wine? Yes, ma'am. As for his paychecks, according to Alan, David didn't work enough to earn one. However, that was far from the truth. David often bought groceries for the restaurant, which he didn't even get paid back for. But hearing about not getting paid left Jen agitated. Where's my paycheck? Honey, you're missing the point. Jeff Ramsey then challenged David to cook him a burger, which he called a redemption burger. Alan, uninvited, joined the challenge as well and cooked his frozen Wagyu patty burger. When Chef Ramsay came back to taste David's burger, he noticed something really interesting about the patty that Alan had made. But what Chef Ramsay thought about it was really funny. I know if you're easy lunch, don't worry. No, Please. I just made a burger. My ingredients. Your own ingredients? Yes. When it came down to tasting the dishes, Alan's burger was hideous. As for David's burger, Chef Ramsay loved the presentation, and this is what he thought about it. I mean, that's what I call a burger. Delicious. Thank you, Chef. Alan and Jen didn't seem to like that David was at the receiving end of all the praise. So, when Chef Ramsay offered Jen to taste the burger, she had the worst reaction yet. <coughs> it was surprising that Alan thought his Wagyu meat was better, when this is what the truth looks like. Doesn't the word Wagyu sounds glamorous and expensive? It doesn't mean you say it's going to deliver you the most tastiest burger. And when you deliberately choose to live under a rock, unwilling to accept change, there's no one, not even Chef Ramsay, who can help you out of it. But this next restaurant couldn't decide on what they wanted to serve. American? Indian? Indo-American? A little bit of everything? How is that supposed to work? In Season 1, Chef Ramsay visited Dillian's in New York, New York. The restaurant owner Mohammed started the restaurant business in order to make a new life for his family. Mohammed employed three different managers, General Manager Martin, Operations Manager Andrew, and Floor Manager Khan. Dillian's was going through an identity crisis since they served a number of different cuisines. The restaurant was struggling and was losing more than $20,000 every month. The general manager Martin described the restaurant as an American-Irish restaurant with an Indianness to it. The Indian chefs had so much difficulty cooking the American dishes that the operations manager Andrew had to step in and cook them. The restaurant was already disgusting, but with flies flying all over the place, it made things even worse. One of the worst mistakes that the restaurant made was when they served Chef Ramsay a vegetarian platter with meat in it. Chef Ramsay was appalled. Everyone's got meat in there. It's not vegetarian. It tastes like lamb. The next mistake they made was serving Chef Ramsay curry with a rotten tomato as a garnish. And the meat that was in the curry wasn't even beef. 
To make things even worse, when Chef Ramsay went inside the kitchen to give some feedback about his lunch, he learned something really awful. Apparently, the lamb Ramsay was served might have been old. But the chef didn't really seem to be sure about it. There were flies buzzing all around, and there was a huge tub of cooked chicken that was left on the floor. That's totally unhygienic and incredibly dangerous. The manager, who was supposed to look after all these problems, was nowhere to be found. Hello, madam. Floor manager, operations manager, general manager, anybody? During the dinner service, the customers struggled with what to order since there was a variety of Indian and American dishes all mixed up. One hour into the service, and no food was sent out. The food was already disgusting, but the customers had to even battle with the flies. Martin was the useless one of the lot, and Chef Ramsay was annoyed with him, so he gave him a piece of his mind. You've got members of your team standing here getting paid, doing f all. I've never met a general manager so s as you. The next day, when Chef Ramsay came to inspect the kitchen, he was faced with his worst nightmare. A nasty kitchen. There was rotten meat and vegetables, thousands of cockroaches, rat traps down in the basement, and piles and piles of rat droppings. Everything that Chef Ramsay saw was worthy of getting the restaurant shut down for health code violations. And that's exactly what happened. So these were the worst mistakes to have ever been made on Kitchen Nightmares. Of course, there are loads more out there, and I'm going to cover each and every one of them right here on my channel. And since you've stuck around for this long, I'm pretty sure you enjoyed the video. So make sure to hit that like button, share the video, and subscribe if you haven't already. Thanks for watching, guys!